Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job, and I'm elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, uh, which is actually we're right here in Westboro. But this show is not about my day job. It's about my friends Frank and Mary, um, whose goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they're here, that means right here in Westboro. So what we have tried to do um, is to bring you information that you think that might be helpful to you as a senior. If you're like Frank and Mary and you really, you know, you want to be involved and you want to stay here, if people and programs that may may be of help to you. Uh, and for this, I got this great co-host, Shelby Marshall, whom everybody seems to know and is now um, in her third year in the Board of Selectmen. Time marches on. It does. Asking. Silver, silver hair among the gold. Oh, you know? I know. Oh, yeah. So because she usually brings on these great guests and she has a special surprise guest for us here today, Shelby. Yes. Well, thank you, Arthur. Always good to see you. And um, uh, today's guest is a very special one. He's a return guest, um, extremely knowledgeable and um, I'm trying to come up with some things that might make him crack a smile. But today's guest is you. It's you, Arthur wow. Bergeron. Wow, how, how exciting. How exciting. Well, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, actually it's probably a month ago now, Arthur, we were, um, you were our guest and we were talking about um, elder law and one of the topics you brought up was gifting. And um, that led us offline to kind of talk about, geez, this is kind of a, Sounds like there's maybe some things that people got mis misconceptions about it. And um, also it's very timely because it's my understanding at the end of the year, these are things that your clients are talking to you about. And so um, it is the gifting giving season, right? Um, so what better guest to have than you to talk about gifting and, you know, in general, what are your clients talking to you about at the end of the year? So I'll pepper you with questions. Now, are you going to don the attorney jacket or are you going to go casual for this one? <laughs> oh, no, she's she's knocking me because I had my official attorney jacket on before and I took it off. No, no, actually, I, I've started wearing suits again because they're warmer. This is an embarrassing thing, right? It's, so so now I wear my suit, but I never wear a tie anymore. You know, I think post COVID, I'm going to have a whole series of ties that, you know, I survived yeah. COVID. You know, which is, you know, what once again, what we've been what we've been talking to some to our folks about is right. was it's so what's so wonderful right now is that you can actually kind of see the light, you know, yeah. not, you know, not exactly. And I just heard, you know, the, the CDC comments about you know, the folks who are going to be in the in the order of things. A lot of the folks who are watching this show are going to be yeah. some of the f people who are getting the vaccine fairly early, not first, you know. Yeah. Because we want, you know, the the care providers and stuff to be, and people who are in nursing homes. But, you know, it, th th this is uh, we're thinking about next year as being a wonderful year. Right, right. The 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 uh, as I like to say, the return to some of the old normal hopefully will will be uh, be blessed upon us. So, until then, um, so gifting. So, um, look, basic stuff. What's allowed? Like what? So what's so what is allowed? And 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 the answer to that is <clears throat> kind of one of the reasons why we had talked about doing this show, because there is this myth that there's some kind of maximum amount that you can give your kids or that you can give other people. And I just wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit because there really isn't unless you are just fabulously wealthy. And, you know, I've been doing this work well, just for a long time. I have I have. I have only found one client, right, who would be affected by these kind of gift limits, right, in all of, in my many years. Okay, so let me just kind of talk about that. So there is this myth. If I were to ask you, you know, isn't there some amount that, that you know. $11,000. And you would give me a number. That's right. Everybody has this number. And now they're all different numbers because they they learned this number at different times. Um so the reason for that, let me talk about that a little bit. So first of all, if you give <clears throat> on, on the receiving end, if you give things to your kids, because this question always comes up, if you give kid things to your kids, like money or stock or whatever you're giving to your kids, if you give them something, right, the receipt of a gift is not income. 
right? If unless they did work for it, you know, and and in which case there'd be there'd be an income tax, you know. But the receipt of a gift, just like the receipt of a bequest, if you inherit something, the receipt of a, of a gift is not income. So whatever you give your kids. They're not having to report that any place. They're, they're not having to write it in their income tax returns. They're not paying any tax on it. It's just free money. Now, if you're giving them money out of your IRA, then before you can give it to them, you have to take the money out of the IRA, and therefore you have to pay an income tax on that, which is why you know typically right. people won't be giving money from their IRAs. But the point is that, for that but that's your tax. That's not your child's tax, right? So, so the receipt of the gift is not income. Yeah. yeah. So just to be clear, so you're my dad. We'll play it out. Save, you know. Gosh, you know, I did well this year, and I'm going to give you twenty five thousand dollars, Shelby. Right. This year, before the right. year's out. Before the year's out. And I don't have to claim any of that as income. No. Okay. No. Thank you. So you're just getting the money. Okay. So now the question is, do what do I do? I have any obligations, right? Um, be, so, so first of all, there is no Massachusetts gift tax, right? And by the way, everything I'm saying applies in Massachusetts. There are, I am told, but I don't know where, uh, some states that have a gift tax. We don't, okay? Um, and, and as a result of that, by the way, one of the things that I, that I often tell clients, we, can, we may talk about it a little bit later on, is that a, com, a, one, a, a great estate planning strategy if you have assets that you think would cause there to be an estate tax because you have total assets of more than a million dollars is give things away the day before you die, right? Because if you do, the estate tax goes away because the taxable estate is what you own at the moment that you die. There's no look back period. There's, there's none of that stuff. Okay. So, so, you know, whatever, whatever you're giving, okay, there is, there is, there is no Massachusetts gift tax. And 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 as a result, and of course, as a result of that, there's this loophole. So you really can give everything away the day before you die and avoid the Massachusetts gift tax. Now, many years ago, the the or excuse me, and avoid the Massachusetts estate tax by just giving it away before you die. Now, many years ago, the federal government adopted an estate tax, and they said that that estate tax applied to all estates over. Oh, the original amount was like forty or fifty thousand dollars. It was very small, and it's gradually increased over time. Um, but they, I think, not immediately, but but fairly shortly after they did the estate tax, they realized that of this loophole, you know, that people can just give everything away the day before they die, and so they also adopted a gift tax because they wanted to make sure that didn't happen, right? So that so that in, so that they said, okay, if you give things away before you there's no matter when, right? There's going to be a gift tax, except there are two exclusions to the gift tax. And there's one that everybody knows about and there's one that just about nobody knows about, okay? And the one that everybody knows about is that you are allowed to give to any one individual in any one year up to a given amount, right? And that amount used to be 10, when it started, it was ten thousand dollars, and it's gradually increased with inflation, right? And right now, it's fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. And if you and if you give away less than that amount of money, not only is there no gift tax, right, but you don't have to file a gift tax return. Okay. Um, and everybody knows that one. But then there's the one that no one knows about. Right. Which is that in addition to that, in addition to giving away these these amounts per person per year, you have an addition, exclu additional exclusion, a lifetime exclusion. Right. Equal to the amount that you could give that that would be the exclusion using the estate tax. And that exclusion right now is a little over eleven million dollars. Right. So in addition to giving away all of these individual checks, you know, and not having no effect, in addition to that, you can give away another up to $11 million during your lifetime, right? Okay. So as a practical matter, unless, you, unless you're, you, you're, you're about to go over the magic $11 million with your gifts this year because you already gave away $10 million, you know, right. there is no gift tax. Right. So, so help me to understand that. So, um, is that lifetime max based on like my estate or is it, is it, 
how it's dispersed. We're because, talking about father versus your father's giving. I'm your father, and I'm giving you some money. Right? Okay, right. No, but so so when it's your money, so this is your estate this we're talking my, about. This is my estate, and I'm giving you money, right? Yep. So I can give you up to up to what is now fifteen thousand dollars per year. And there's an exclusion for that, and, it, and there's no gift tax. And in addition to that, if I give you less than that amount, I don't have to file an estate tax re or a gift tax return, okay? But in addition to that, all right, so right this year, I could write you that check. But in addition to that, unless the gift that I'm giving you this year is going to, sh is going to combine with all of my previous gifts up to this point in my life, and not counting those little gifts, the gifts were yep. under fifteen thousand dollars. Only the ones that are in excess of this of that num of that amount get applied to this lifetime exclusion. So suppose I wanted to give you twenty thousand dollars. Yep. So I would I would technically looking at the gift tax at, at the gift tax statute, my first fifteen thousand would be excluded because I can just give it to you because you're a person this year. Right. The other 5,000 is also excluded, except that it gets subtracted yep. from the lifetime amount that I can give, the $11 million. Got it. Okay? So, uh, so I could write you a check for 20. I could write you a check for $100,000. I could write you a check for a million dollars. Got it. It won't have any effect. I had a couple that I talked to, I remember several years ago. I think they lived in Southboro. And they and they they were both retired and they'd done okay and they had four million dollars right they had a house and some other stuff right but they had quite a bit of just cash you know and they said you know so we really want to you know we we you know we really want to leave our and they had two sons right and they said well we're really going to leave everything to our sons but we'd really like to give them some money now right. so is there some way we can give that to them over time I said well no you can write them a check right now just write one a check for a million and write the other a check for a million that's all fine they were astonished that they wow. could do astonished because the kids at that point, you know, one of them was starting a business. They want to met kids going through college. They could really use the money, sure. you know, sure. and so it just kind of, it, it took care. It just kind of took care. And by the way, by doing that, it reduced their estate from like $4 million to $2 million, which means if they both drop dead the next day, right, it was going to reduce the Massachusetts estate tax also. Okay. Right. Right. So it's like a huge benefit. So, so, but now there's, there's just one glitch. Okay. And I want to be clear on this. It is true that under the federal, uh, um, estate and gift tax code, if you make a gift to an individual in a year above that individual exclusion amount of what is now $15,000, you're supposed to file a gift tax return. Right. And as a result of this, People are, are, are told they're supposed to file a gift tax return. And so they spend all this time making these gifts for this smaller amount of money. What they never ask, they're, typically this comes up with, you're talking to your accountant. What you, they, you never ask your accountant is, well, what happens if I don't? You know, this is the kind of question that lawyers ask all the time, right? It's that the whole theory of, so what, you know, what's the, what's the, the so-called bad man theory? The best way to figure out a law is to figure out what happens if you don't obey it, right? So what happens if you don't file a gift tax return? And the answer is nothing, unless um, as a result of this gift, you've gone over the, max, the magic number, the magic $11 million, and therefore owed a tax. Because if you owed a tax, then there is a penalty, and the penalty is a percentage of the tax that you didn't pay, right? And that would be retro to whatever time in which you didn't pay it. it, and it, it well, in this case, it would, and it would be that year. It would be well, the that, year. that, that that's year, right. right. That's right. right. It would be the year that you should have filed the gift tax return and should have paid the tax. Right. So, so I guess the, my caveat is, right, if you really think, you know, that during your lifetime, right, although actually, you know, that's not even true. If, if 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 you have already given so much so much money that the check you're going to write if i if the check i were going to write to you this year was going to put me over my 11 million yep because i had already given more than that right in that case i need to file the gift tax return and pay the tax yep. if i have given you more than $15,000 this year right this year right this year right, right? right. Mm -hmm. but 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 
the, all of the past years that I gave you money, that was all okay. Those were all excluded because sure. I hadn't for yet. Right. And so if I give you my $100,000 this year, I, I don't pay any tax and I don't have to file a um, gift mm -hmm. tax return yep. unless I just feel kind of morally obligated to do it, right? Sure, now, sure. Again, the, by the way, the reason why the government was wanting you to file those gift tax was only so that they could keep 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 track keep track. somewhere somewhere in in the, in the history, they could keep so that so that they could know right, right. that you know the other you know if I gave you one hundred fifteen thousand dollars so that they could know the fifteen thousand was excluded the extra hundred is now supposed to get subtracted from this big ledger you know from Arthur Bergeron's ether ledger there's, there's this guy kind of in the bowels of the IRS who has these big books. <laughs> And he just keeps, <laughs> oh, oh, we took off another hut. So that now it's down to 10 million, 800,000 yeah. that you can give, you know. Yep. But there's no penalty if you don't file the gift tax return. Interesting. Wow. So wow. you can give as much as you want anytime. And how does this, how does this apply, Arthur, um, if it's not cold, hard cash? So it's stock. It's the value of the stock at the day of the transaction. Um, yes, it, it is. It, to, in terms of what I'm giving the, the child, I'm giving the stock on the day of the transaction. But in terms of what the child is getting, so this is this is one of the caveats, right? In terms of what the child is getting, if you if I am giving you hundred thousand dollars in stock, right? Mm -hmm. That I bought those stock for fifteen thousand ah. dollars, right? Yep. My tax basis in those stock is fifteen thousand dollars. Yep. If I'm giving them to, if I sell them, right, I'm going to pay a capital gains tax on the, I, I, there was a capital gain, the difference between $100,000 and fifteen, and I'm going to pay a capital gains tax on that, right? If I give them to you, that gift is not a taxable event. So you don't pay a, ta a tax, right? But when you get the stock, you get my tax basis, okay? So you get, if you're getting the stock, you're getting my $15,000 tax basis. If you then turn around and sell the stock, right, then you're going to pay a capital gains tax on that difference. OK, so that so that from the from the parents perspective, if you're picking and choosing what to give a you don't want to give money out of your IRA because you're going to end up paying an income tax on that money before you can give it away. B, if you can choose between giving somebody an appreciated asset like the stock, right, and just cash, you always give them the cash. Right. And the reason for that is if you keep the stock, right, the one, one of the, the you know, there, there is certainly one of the, the bad news about having these assets when you die, any assets, is that there may be an estate tax. Right. And the estate tax applies to your estate. If your estate is over a million dollars. Right. The good news, though, about owning these assets when you die is that that tax basis that we were just talking about, the 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 fifteen thousand dollar tax basis in my hundred thousand dollars worth of stock. The moment that I die, that basis jumps to the date of death value, right? So the basis that was fifteen thousand dollars, the moment I die, the basis jumps up to a uh, hundred thousand dollars. Right? Oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. And so if the kids sell the stock the next day, they pay zero in capital gains tax, right? So. So that, that leads to a couple of, so now that you brought this up, well, that leads to a couple of repercussions to this, right? One is, um, if you're single, right, then you really wanna, you wanna weigh that out, you know, you wanna, because this is just a math problem. The question is, you know, by, by giving the stock away now, you're reducing your, your Massachusetts estate, if it's worth more than a million dollars, by some amount, right? But that some amount is probably only going to be about six or seven percent of the value of those of the of the value of those stock, right? Six thousand, seven thousand on a hundred thousand dollars, right? Um, by giving them away, though, you've given away this basis, right? So that now, if you die, your kids are going to pay this capital gains tax on this on a lot of money. On if say we'll use the same example. Say you gave your kids a basis of a stock with a basis of fifteen thousand. And now they're selling it for a hundred thousand dollars. Their capital gain, if they live in Massachusetts, right, combined federal and state is going to be about twenty percent, right. 
So 100,000 right. minus 15 is 85,000, 20% of that's about $17,000. So the amount that they would, would, would pay in capital gain is more than the amount that the person saved by reducing their estate, right? By reducing their taxable estate, right? If they're only saving 7%, and the tax, you know, so so it's a math problem, right? But but a couple of things about that. First, if the total value of your assets is under a million dollars, you always want to give the stuff, you know, you 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 always want to keep it until the day you die, because you're not going to pay an estate tax when you die, because your estate is worth less than a million dollars, and the moment that you die, the the values all jump to the day to death value, right? So, so you're not paying any estate tax. The moment that you die, these values jump to the date of death value, and then your kids can sell the property. Now, I, I'm doing that talking about stock, but the most common place where that discussion occurs is when there's a house. Right, exactly. Same thing. You bought your house. You know, you're living in Westboro. You bought your house in 1990 or 1980 for a hundred thousand dollars, you know, or fifty thousand dollars, and now it's worth four hundred, right? While you're alive, um, you you wouldn't pay a big capital gains tax if you sold that house because you get this exclusion, right, of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. If you die owning the house, though, the tax basis jumps to the date of death value, four hundred thousand dollars. Your kids sell the house the next day; they pay no capital gains tax, right? So that's but now that is, not. Now, by the way, I'm just going to mention one other thing, though, and but this because this really relates to planning when when you've got Frank, both Frank and Mary, when they're espouses, right? Because when you're if, if you anything you leave to your spouse, right, is subtracted from your taxable estate. So if we have total assets worth two million dollars, right, and I'm leaving everything to my wife, right then the goal is really to make sure the assets are in my name. And that's why people do this, some kind of pre-death plan in my name at the time that I die. So that when I die, especially those assets that have a low basis will jump, whether it's stock or the house or whatever, right? So now suppose we're older, suppose we're in our nineties, right? And I'm gonna die and, you know, cause I'm really sick, but my wife is gonna die, not tomorrow, but you know, soon, right? What our strategy should probably be to make sure that when I die, right, all the assets that have that are, that have this low basis are in my name so that the basis will jump to the date of death value. Right now, my wife has all the assets, but she's still got all the assets. She's got two million dollars. Right. So if she now gives those assets away. Right. Or if she. She's now giving her kids the house at that stepped up basis because the basis jumped the day that I died to the date of death value, right? And by giving it to them, I'm taking it out of my estate for estate tax purposes. So now I've completely avoided the estate tax while at the same time benefiting from that jump in the basis, right? Wow. That's the game. So, so this whole conversation has made me realize we need to be talking more about this for Frank and Mary because it's complex. Because now I'm yeah. thinking, geez, I always thought the right thing to do was, and I know it's really case specific, family specific, was to create a trust. So where does the trust fit into it? So we don't have time for that today. But this yeah. tells me that Arthur, not only are you a regular, uh, you're our co-host here, but you're going to be a regular guest <laughs> to Frank and Mary. This so, could be a series. This yes. could be a series. Well, and I know you you've done your your briefs in the past and you know your your workshops, but I I do think um you know as we sort of think about our a little bit of a return to normalcy, having these kind of conversations is really important for Frank and Mary because sometimes you can only bite off a small part of the cake, right? And you just kind of chew on that, and then you have a conversation with your elder law attorney about um you know, hey, this is what I heard on Frank and Mary. How am I positioned, right? Right. But right. the bottom line, before the end of the year, right, there isn't like this magic amount that you can give and that you got to get it done by the end of the year. It makes no difference. You can give as much as you want or as little as you want anytime and everything's going to be fine, 
All so right. um, my my address is I'll, I'll email it to you. So when you want yeah. to send the check, just any <laughs> at your convenience, right? And just Aiden don't start would calling me dad. Just don't yeah, start. Just no, don't. and Aiden would love a small uh, portion as <laughs> well. I think. That. That's great. That's great. Well, you know, Aiden's always entitled to a percentage for being the guy behind the scenes. Now, right. before we end, yep. Um, just just give us a couple minutes. Anything new happening in Westboro that Frank and Mary ought to be knowing about? Because once again, um, we'll have another show in a couple of weeks, but we just want, just want to make one of the points of this is to make sure we keep people up on what's going on. Um, so I'm actually not, I'm just going to update folks that next week, our next show, we're going to do the VIA ride along. So we talked about that a oh, couple of right. weeks ago. Right. And um, we're going to, Arthur and I are going to take Frank and Mary on the road along with Aiden, and we're going to show you how it works. So I encourage you to watch our next show. Um, and, um, we'll leave it at that. And, um, a couple other interesting shows coming up in December. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much. So folks, I hope I didn't bore you with all of that. You know, I always hate being a guest because I'm like, oh, I'm going to be so boring. But if, I, you know, if, if you got any questions on that, you know, please give me a call in, 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 in my direct lines, 508-860-1470. I never charge for it. I love giving advice. You can probably tell. I love giving advice. And so thank you, Shelby, for inviting me, you know, onto the show, you know, and, and now I feel like I've, I've, I've exhausted everything I know about gifting <laughs> and I'll dine, dine to do the next show, dying to do the next show. Awesome. Folks, hope you enjoy this and um, please, um, um, we hope to see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much. Thanks. 